Welcome to another video on smart architectural programming. My name is Mohammed, and coding alongside me is George. And today we'll be going over Python dictionaries using the Git method. I'll let you go, Mohammed. Thank you. Uh, so just to wrap up a brief uh, context around why we're going to be focusing on the dot get method, method in particular in Python, which is a method related to dictionaries is that in, uh, in Python generally dictionaries are a fundamental data structure that store key value pairs. The got dot get method in particular its significance arises in the fact that it is used to retrieve the value associated with a given key in a dictionary. It all at the same time it provides us a way to access dictionary values safely especially when key may not exist in the dictionary. So one thing to remember, whenever we talk about something safely in coding, it usually refers to be defensive of errors, right? That what safely implies in most cases is that we're being defensive towards errors. We want the code to run even if an error pops up. We need to have a way to make sure that the error does not disrupt the entire, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, functioning of the code. So that is what dot get does for us. Uh, when we're trying to access values in dictionaries. So in this video, we're going to, as we're explaining a method, we're going to go over three coded examples, but these three coded examples uh, would uh, give us, uh, would not be basically different methods of implementation, but rather would be, a, a number one would be uh, showing us how to, uh, to use this method. So it would cover the basic uses of the users, usage of the dot get method. Number two, will provide it with a default value so that if uh, a value does not exist, it provides us a single value that we can expect. And number three, we're going to uh, look over and see how it handles missing keys and output related to that. So with that out of the picture, uh, let's move on to the first method, which is the basic usage of the dot get method. So if you look at the screen here, we have defined a dictionary called preferences and we have two key value pairs here theme and language right um, that's how we have defined this dictionary uh, I think uh, let's move back this that was the other example we're going to move the first example which is here we're here we're defining a dictionary called student which which has three key value pairs the name Alice the age 20 and the major computer science uh, from line four onward, we use uh, we're going to use the dot get method to retrieve value for the key age. So we define age as student, uh, age variable as student, and we're getting the value of the age variable using the get method from the dictionary, uh, and we're using the uh, asking the dot get method to find the key which is age. We have this key in uh, in in the dictionary uh, on number two. So the dot get method will be successful in finding that uh, uh, finding that value, and then when we print this variable, we get the output 20, which is the age value in the dictionary. Now the uh, significance of this is basically again what you need to understand here is that there are other methods that you can uh, uh, use to find values in dictionaries. You can use the square notation, so on and so forth. Uh, but the bottom line with that is that uh, it's not a safe or a, or you could say correct way of uh, uh, finding values within uh, uh, within a Python. So this is probably the best method through which you can uh, find um, uh, say safely find values in dictionaries uh, when you're coding in Python. And probably what most of your uh, 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 what would be the recommended way in most of the professional programming teams you might work in in the future or currently. So with that out of the way, uh, the second aspect in its basic usage that we need to cover is we need to try and access a key that does not exist, which is the grade of the student. So we create a variable called grade and we try to use the dot get method to find the uh, value saved in the dictionary uh, uh, key grade that does not exist. So when we try to print grade, the output of grade is none. So this is the output we get grade dot none. If we run this dictionary, I just want to show you that's that's the output we get. And the none value might not seem significant, but the significance of this is that if we use the square notation, 
uh, to get a value from dictionary. If nothing is there, there's going to be a key uh, key error in Python, and uh, your code would be disrupted. Your program would stop, and uh, every uh, you know all the, everything would come to a halt in your program uh, in your program. In most cases, that is what we want to avoid. That's what I mean by safely. So defensively, instead of that notation, we're going to use um, we're going to use the dot get method, which would lead to the fact that we get the none uh, none value there. Dot get method gives you a value even if the key key there a key does not exist. This makes sure that even if um, that particular key does not exist, your program keeps on running without any interruption. So that is the significance of the dot get method over any other method to access values within dictionary. So with that out of the way, we're going to move on to the second coded example that we need to look at. If you uh, look at your screen, basically, this example exemplifies how providing a default value to the dot get method would help us in um, uh, help us further further uh, in ways which we could not imagine with the other notation. So we know that we get a none value when we uh, when we uh, there's there's no key uh, that uh, that uh, when we ask dot get method to get information for a key and that key does not exist and a key error uh, uh, pops up, we get a none value out of the dot get method. But imagine if you can define a value. Uh, if that uh, particular key uh, key does not exist, this would help you in not just avoiding error, but also making sure that your program is more uh, systematic in its process, and uh, you can gather uh, data and intelligence if certain value does not exist, because you're trying to store data with dictionaries. So if that Data does not exist within dictionary. You can record that instead of uh, not, that not only not posing a problem, but also helping you uh, understand if you have a certain data point or not. So in this case, uh, if you notice uh, on line four, I'm not going to over the, the dictionary I we created because uh, th that's pretty much self-explanatory on line two. Uh, but uh, on line five, you'll notice we use uh, we are trying to get the major the subject major that a student might be studying under and we use the dot get method and major major does not a major key does not exist in the dictionary that's defined above so in the second argument we give it a default value so what it means is if the dot get method does not find the major key in the python dictionary then the value that the dot uh, method needs to return is undeclared so when we print major uh, variable instead of it showing us none it shows us something that means something which is undeclared right so that is the significance of using default values in the dot get method uh, when dealing with dictionaries in python similarly we use the we try to save the grade of the student in a grade variable where the grade key does not exist so we uh, again give it a default value in string strings of not available so when we print it, instead of it printing none, it prints not available. Again, the significance of it is that it's providing us some level of intelligence, right, regarding the data instead of just showing us none. Uh, so the default value is an essential aspect to understand if you want to use the dot get method effectively as a programmer. The third example that we're going to be dealing with is going to help us understand how the dot get method handles missing keys. So if you go to the third example here, you'll notice that we've defined a dictionary that I talked about right at the start, right? Uh, uh, then I had to go back to example one, is that there's a preferences dictionary which defines a theme, which a uh, key which has a dark value and a language key which defines Python as the value. So if we use the dot get value for a key that don't, does not exist here, and we uh, set up a, a default value of 12 pixels, we get that as a, we get the font size as 12 pixels. So, all right. So if you look at this code in particular, you'll understand that this code in particular refers to a case uh, most users would have when, we, when you're dealing with an application or what would be behind an application uh, when you're trying to access that application. 
an application when you create an account stores your preferences when you change the settings of the size the theme the the dark mode or the white mode so on and so forth and those preferences are stored as a form of data point in some way in most cases as a dictionary so when you log into your account your saved preferences are read from that dictionary and applied to your uh, user interface so let's suppose that uh, you didn't save any preferences you only saved the theme preference and the language preference which is python and uh, software is very, very, you could say, systematic in, in, and um, systematic in its approach. That is, that it it it's getting values of the different user inter interface, uh, uh, you know, uh, aspects that you see. And in those values, it realizes I don't know what the font size you font size you prefer is. So. If you have preferred a font size, let me go back and check if that font size is, size is available, right? So it on line five you'll see it uh, saves a creates a variable called font size and checks within the preferences dictionary data point try to get your font size. At the same time, if you haven't stored your font size, it can't just say none, which means you can't see anything on uh, on your screen. You'll just the interface with no text. Nothing there, right? Because it's running the none value. So to safeguard against the fa uh, against the fact that you might not have saved the font value preference, the code base would create a default value. Uh, as we talked about the default value earlier, right? A default value to make sure that regardless if there is a preference, they'll put the font size as your preference. But if there's not a preference, the font size is still there and the font still shows up on your screen. So that is 12 pixels and uh, the font size when we print that we get the uh, font size and so on and so forth. Now the key aspect to understand here is that we talked about default values pre in the previous example. But here we can understand in particular how missing keys might create massive problems in an application. This is just one example of an account in a website or a platform that or a application that you may be dealing with and this is a very very common application and if a value is missing and let alone the program crashing because you did not use the dot get method and use some other value to get these values and when you didn't find that value key error popped up and your entire program stopped functioning uh, uh, supposedly we we know the better and we didn't do that right and we use the dot get method if you use the dot get method you get a none value right and that creates uh, another layer, uh, another logical, uh, like not a syntactical or a code base error, but a logical error in your code. How do you deal with that? This is how you deal with that, like creating default values to make sure there is something to fall back on for the code to work as expected, right? This is why the dot get method has such a high importance when you're dealing with uh, getting values from a Python dictionary. Um, I think uh, that's most more, the more important uh, aspect of what we need to discuss in the dot get method. Uh, before we uh, uh, sign off uh, 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 from this video, George, would you like to add anything at the end? No, but thank you, covered it. And we'll see you on our next video.